Hello friends, welcome to another video about industrial electricity. In this video, we are going to show you some devices that are very useful in the electrical industry. These devices include load control relay, the miniature switch, RCCB switch, three-phase monitoring relay, timer, and contactor. In the following video, we will explain each one of them. First, we will go to the miniature switch. If you want to become a professional electrician, please stay with me until the end of the video. What's the miniature switch? This is a question that all electricians should know the answer. The miniature switch generally have two tapes, one phase and three phase, which you can see in the picture. You can see its inputs and outputs in the picture. Miniature switches are used to disconnect and connect the electric current and prevent the passing of excess current and protect the circuits against short circuit. Short circuit means connecting two wires with different potentials without electrical resistance. If we connect two wires that have different potentials together, this will cause sparks and fire because a lot of current passes in the short period of time and causes damage device. In the following, we have included a video for short circuit training. In this video, the blue wire is null and the red wire is phase that is connected to the miniature switch. When the phase and null are connected, the miniature switch cuts off the circuit because the phase and null wires have electrical potential difference. This is another example of a short critic in the car battery where we connect the positive and negative. The term 6 on the miniature switch means that the current limit that this switch can pass in 6 amperes and more than that will cut the circuit. And the word C next to it indicates the type of switch. When the switch is type C, if the initial current is 10 times the nominal current, it will not cut the circuit. And if it is more, it will cut the circuit. The tape D switch has a higher initial current and is used in industry. And the tape B switch has a lower initial current and is used in the lighting circuit and buildings. The number 6000 written in the rectangle means that the switch can pass a momentary current of 6000 amperes. And believe it is written potential difference permissible. This is a 10 amperes single phase switch. This switch is type D and 25 amperes. This is a 63 amperes switch. The current must enter from the top and exit from the bottom. These switches are easily placed on the rail of the electrical panel. When the switch is connected, its color is red, and when it's disconnected, its color is green. The second device is the contactor. The contactor is a magnetic switch that connect and disconnect the electricity. Contactors have three input at the top and three outputs at the bottom. It also has a coil that activates the contactor by connecting to the electricity. Each contactor has an upper limit for passing current, which is written on it. That for this contactor is 18 amperes. The contactors also have two relay known as normal close and normal open. From this part, the contactors are placed on the rail in the electrical panel. Other contactor details are written in this section. When the handle is pressed, inputs and outputs are connected. Now, we want to test the contactor with a multimeter. For this, we put the multimeter on the beep mode. 
If you don't know how to work with multi-match, refer to video linked now. We put two probes on the input and output of the contactor. When we press the handle, the multimeter should beep. If you like the video, press press the like and subscribe button. And this means the contactor is healthy. Now we go to the relay test. This is a normal closed blade, which means they are connected together in a normal state. And this is a normal open blade, which means that when we press the handle, they connect together. Now we test the relay. When we press the handle, it beep. And for the upper blades, when we don't press the handle, it beeps. Now we go to the coil wiring. When the electricity is connected to the coil, the contactor handle is pressed automatically. The coil of this contactor works with 220 voltage. We measure the voltage with a multimeter. The voltage is suitable. Now we connect the phase and null wires to the coil. Look carefully. Now we test the contactor. Now we won't turn off and turn on this lamp with the contactor. Pay attention to the wiring. We connect the phase and null wire of the lamp to the output of the contactor. Also, we connect the phase and null wire to the input of contactor. For simplicity, we connect the phase and null wire from the coil. In this part, we want to wire an error light. For this, we want the null wire of the lamp directly. And we connect the phase wire of the lamp to the output of the contactor. Now, we connect the input phase wire to the input of the contactor. With this, when we press the contactor handle, the lamp turns on.
Now we want to connect the error lamp. For this, we connect a phase wire to the input of the normal closed blade. The error light has a phase wire and a null wire like a normal lamp. We want the error light to turn off when the lamp is on and vice versa. For this, we connect the phase wire of the lamp to the normally open blade terminal and connect the null wire directly. Now look carefully. The lamp is on and the error light is off. The lamp turns off and the error light turns on. The next device is the RCCB switch. RCCB switches are useful and practical and it's necessary to install them in every house. RCCB switches prevent people and animals from being electrocuted. We have a single phase type and a three phase type here. The switch type is written on this part. The maximum current passing through these switches is 40 amperes which is written in this section also the accuracy of this switch is written on this part which is 30 milliamperes for these two switches 30 milliamperes means that if the difference between input and output current increases the switch will cut off the circuit and this feature provided protection In this section, there is a test key that is used to test the health of the switch. When the power is connected to the switch, if you press the test key, the switch will be disconnected. This switch has a null input and a phase input. And it also has a null output and a phase output. When the switch is connected, the inputs and outputs are connected. In the three phase type, there is a null input and three phase inputs as well as a null output and three phase output when the switch is connected the inputs and outputs are connected when the switch is off the device does not beep which means that the input and outputs are not connected when the switch is connected the inputs and outputs must be connected and the device beeps and the device beeps means that the switch is healthy and it is same in the three phase type now we want to connect the power to the switch and test the switch for this we connect the phase and null wire to the terminals When we press the test key, the switch should be disconnected, which means that the switch is healthy. And it's same in three phase type.
Now we want to test the switch with this lamp. If we connect phase and null wire to the outputs, the lamp will turn on. But if we connect one of the wires to the output and the other to the input, the switch will be disconnected. This occurrence is because the phase current and the null current are not same and there is a leak somewhere because the current leaves the output phase but doesn't enter the output null. How does this switch protect against electric shock? When I touch the phase wire with my hand, the current passes through my body and enters the ground. And since the current doesn't return the null switch, the switch cut off the circuit and prevent electrocution. And it is same in the three phase type. Thank you for your attention. The next device is the three-phase monitoring relay. This device is necessary for every three-phase electric motor. Here we have a three-phase miniature switch to turn on and turn off the power. We also have a three-phase monitoring relay that we want to learn how to wire. We also have a conductor that connects and disconnects the electrical current of the electric motor. On the three-phase monitoring relay, there are three numbers of bases to which three-phase power must be connected. In this step, we connect three phases to it. This device protects three phase electric motors from two phase and reverse rotation. Three phase electric motors are very sensitive, and this device must be installed in the electrical panel for them. When the three-phase power is connected, the AC light will turn on. Also, the red light will start flashing. During the time when the red light is flashing, it means that the device is timing. And this is the connection delay time. The connection delay time can be adjusted from here. When the device is activated, pin 15 is connected to the pin 18. If not, in this case, pin 15 is connected to the pin 16. Now the red light does not flash, which means the device is active. Therefore, in this case, if we connect a phase to pin 15, pin 18 will also become a phase. We connect one phase to pin 15. and we connect pin 18 to the contactor coil. With this, when the three-phase monitoring relay is activated, it also activates the contactor and allows the flow of current.
contactor is activated. Now, if I disconnected one of these phases, the contactor will not be activated and the electric motor will not turn on because if the electric motor starts working with two phases, it will break down after a while and this device prevent two phases. When the P-light turns on, it means that the electricity has become two phase and the device cuts off the circuit. But when the F light turns on, it means that the potential difference of the phases is too high or too low and the circuit is cut off so that the electric motor is not damaged. Now I put the phase in its place. Now we move the two phases. You can see that the circuit is broken again and the P-light is on. This prevents the reverse rotation of the electric motor. By adjusting this value, we can increase and decrease the sensitivity of the device. Now we move the phases again and the device is connected. Electricity enters from this part and is connected to the electric motor from this part. We cut one of the phases again. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, ask in the comment section. The next device is load control relay. The current controller protects electrical circuit against access current. Here we have a contactor that we use to disconnect and connect circuits. We also have a digital current controller that we want to talk about. All these tools have three holes through which the three phase wires pass and their current is measured. They also have several bases to which the wire of the command circuit are connected. First, we go to the wiring of the power circuit. We assume that our consumer is a three phase electric motor and we want to control its current. First, we assume that the three main phases are connected to the input of the conductor. Now, we want to connect its output to electric motor.
these three output phases must be connected to the three phase electric motor but before that we must pass these three phases through the current controller holes so that the current of the wires can be measured and controlled now we can connect these three phases to the electric motor and the power circuit is complete Now we assume have a single phase electric motor and we want to control its current. The single phase electric motor includes a null wire and a phase wire. So the input of the contactor must include a phase wire and a null wire, which we assume are connected. Therefore we connect one phase and one null for output of the contactor. In order to control the current of the electric motor, we must pass the phase wire through the first and third hole of the current controller and then connect it to electric motor. The phase and null wire must be connected to the single phase electric motor in this way. Now we go to the control circuit. In the control pins, there are two pins N and PH to which the phase and null wire are connected and turn on the current controller. Pin C is the output of the command phase, which means that one phase wire must be connected to it. The NO pin is the normal output pin, that is, if there is no error, the pin is connected to the C pin and if the C pin is organized, the NO pin is also organized. Therefore, we can use pin NO to connect the phase wire to the contactor coil. The NC pin is the opposite of the NO pin, that is when an error occurs this pin is organized by the C pin. Now we are wiring the control circuit. First, we connect the phase and null to N and PH pin. When phase and null wire are connected, the device turns on. In this step, we will set the parameters of this device. The first parameter is the upper current limit. For example, if it is set to 10 ampere, if more current passes through the wires, the circuit will be cut off. The second parameter is the lower limit of current. For example, if it is set to 3 amperes, if the current is less, the circuit will be cut off. The next parameter is the symmetry of the current. For example, if it is set to 10%, the circuit will be cut if the three phase current are more than this value. The next parameter is the connection delay. For example, if it is set to 5 seconds, the circuit will be connected after this time. The next parameter is the interruption delay. For example, if it is set to 3 seconds, if an error occurs in the current, the circuit will be interrupted after this time. The next parameter is similar to the previous parameter with the difference that the cutoff delay is for current symmetry fault. The next parameter is the delay in calculating this current. For example, when it is set to 4 seconds, 
the current is not calculated for four seconds after the electric motor is turned on. To save the setting, it's enough to turn off and on the device once. Now we go to the continuation of the wiring of the command circuit. We connect a null to the contactor coil. We connect a phase to the base C and we connect a phase from the base NO to the coil of the contactor. With this, the command circuit is complete. When the current is normal, the contactor is connected. And when an error occurs, the contactor cuts the circuit. The next device is timer. This is a digital timer. This timer has a N base, pH base, a start base, And the lower has three bases. 15 bases. 18 bases. And 16 bases. The maximum output current of this timer is 5 amperes. This timer works with 220 volts electricity. For this, we need a contactor. The contactor is a magnetic switch that has three input pins and three output pins. When this handle is pressed, the input and output are connected. Also, the contactor has a coil that connects and disconnects the contactor by connecting electricity to it. We also need a miniature switch to turn off and turn on the power. This is a single phase outlet that is used in wiring. This is a terminal that is used to connect the null wire. Now we go to the wiring details. First, we install the necessary equipment on the rail. First, we need a phase wire and a null wire. We connect the phase wire to the miniature switch. And we connect the null wire to the null terminal. Now it is ready to use by activating the miniature switch. The electricity reaches the timer from the miniature switch and then the timer commands the contactor and activates the contactor. The contactor activates the single phase outlet. First we start wiring the timer. We connect the null wire to the null base. The contactor coil also needs a null wire. Also, the single phase socket needs a null wire, which we connect to it from the null terminals.
The null wiring is finished. Now we start the phase wiring. We connect the phase wire from a miniature switch to the base pH and start and the 15 base of a timer. The start pin and the pH pin turn on the timer and the 15 pin is the timer input relay. In the normal mode, 15 pin is connected to the 16 pin and when the timer is turned on, 15 pin is connected to the 18 pin and then the same step is repeated and it has flasher mode. Therefore, we connect the phase wire to the 15 pin, pH and start pin. Now, when we activate the miniature switch, the timer will turn on. Turning on and off of this light indicates the disconnection and connection of the timer relay. We can see this in the phase meter light. Now, we do the wiring of the contactor coil. We connect a wire from 18 pin to the coil of contactor. With this, when the timer relay is activated, then the contactor is activated. Now look carefully. Now we connect a phase wire to the input of the contactor. and we connected the output of the contactor to the outlet. Now the wiring is complete. We want to connect this lamp to the timer.
This timer has different modes. We press this button to go to the seating and press these buttons to increase and decrease the value. For example, we set the timer in 6 mode, which is a second second mode. Choice mode, 6 mode. Setting the time to stay on, 4 second. Setting the shutdown time, 6 second. Relay mode setting. To save the setting, turn off and on the device once. I hope this video is useful for you. Thank you. This video is finished. If you like the video, please press the like and subscribe button. Good luck.